So this is a painting I did in my sketchbook um, last week and um, although I really like the design of it I wasn't overly happy with the surface texture. I felt like in some parts it was very flat so this week I'm going to do a painting in my sketchbook and try and really work on the texture. So I'm going to start off with quite bold um, marks in here by just sort of getting rid of all the white paper, coming in with black, with my colour shaper, and just getting a whole variety of different paint effects and marks. One of the things I like to do when I do this is to write into the painting at the very beginning. And here I'm just writing song lyrics really, and once I get started then I can think, I start thinking th of more things that are sort of pertinent to me. And on this day, it was my father's birthday. He died in 2017, so um, it's always a day when I remember him. And so I said happy birthday to him. Anyway, so now all of that just gets painted over, but it's a nice way of bringing in sort of just marks that sometimes do uh, stay in the painting and sort of peep through and help to create that sort of interesting texture that I'm, I'm after. So um, I'm smoothing here, I'm spreading out that white gesso and while it's still wet I'm going to write into, into it again. And uh, this time because the gesso is quite thick the pencil is sort of carving into it and, um, and it will create sort of grooves in the, in the gesso when it's dried. Um, and just carrying that idea through, I'm now just putting uh, marks really and just connecting one side of the painting to the other. This is just sort of playful experimentation. It really, um, most of it will get covered over. Now I'm wetting the um, page and I'm going to dollop some ink into it and see what sort of effects that gets. I'm just sort of moving the ink around into the water that's already on the page and letting the ink uh, fall into those grooves that was made by the pencil in the, uh, in the wet gesso. Or just spreading it around with a sponge just trying to create different sort of marks and now I'm spreading it a little bit with a comb just to see if that does anything and uh, it's all just trial and error just trying to see what what will happen okay now this is what it looks like when it's when it's left to dry and you can see there's some really nice um, sort of variety of depth of color that happens with those inks that I really like um, and I like the combination of the writing with those inks. But having done that, now I have to sort of push it back. And I'm doing that by just putting a light, neutral sort of colour over it. Then I've come in with some shapes using some stencils. And once again, dripping some water onto it and moving the wet paint around a little bit with that colour shaper. Just to um, break into the shapes and create some interesting uh, marks on that page and uh, having some edges that are soft and some that are more defined and this is the process I'm using I'm doing on the right hand side as well so while the ink while the paint is kind of semi dry I sprinkle some water on it and then move the wet paint around with the color shaper and I, I what I really like about this is um, how you know you you get lots of unintentional things that you you couldn't plan just you know allowing accidental marks to happen and this is how a really interesting texture can be built up okay so now with that texture looking quite yummy I'm going to come in with some color and I want to now I'm, I'm thinking about what this painting is going to you know what how can I make this painting more interesting so that colour was underneath and I've just brought more of it on top and looking at different ways of putting in the colour. I've made shapes, now I'm making line 
and these will become areas of pattern uh, which I'm sort of distributing around the composition. If I put them in a few different places then I've got options and that it helps to make the left hand side of the painting relate to the right if I use the same colour throughout. So that's what these are all about. And each little bank of pattern is going to be a little bit different from the others. I'm being quite sort of haphazard with the way I'm putting the paint on. I'm allowing mistakes to happen and now I'm actually breaking into that pattern and disturbing it with that colour shaper. I don't want it to be too perfect. And so now what I'm doing is I'm bringing in this light colour once again, it's a sort of a colour that is already in the painting. I'm creating the design of the painting really. I'm making details, creating shapes and taking away things that are unnecessary. I'm deciding what I want this painting to be about and what I want the viewer to look at. And it's really just about this interesting shape. And so I sort of felt like it looked like but I'm sort of creating a different land. That's what's in my head. It sort of speaks of maybe islands, man-made structures on them. Um, and because it's so textured, it sort of has a suggested history, so it's, it's kind of a little bit more interesting than having it just flat. And now I'm bringing in some line just to connect shapes and bring in a different type of mark that I haven't already got before. Using a dark pencil and using a, a light pencil previously. So you can see that this has got a lot more texture in it. You can see that the writing that I did in the very early layers is still there. You can still see parts of it. You can't make any sense of it, but it, it sort of suggests that there is some intention. There's some meaning, there's some um, thought underneath this painting. And that's the final composition, which I'm quite happy with. And the texture is so much better. <laughs> 